I'm Melvin Carter and I'm the mayor of St. Paul. I grew up in a house where both my parents uh, you know, founded nonprofit organizations right here in St. Paul. And so I grew up uh, with a passion for community life and making community life better. Uh, for most of my life, I didn't really relate electoral politics to the quality of life in communities, which is a whole different topic. Uh, but uh, have gotten a chance to work as a community organizer, to work on campaigns, uh, and about 12 years ago when our former mayor, Chris Coltman, got into office, uh, I worked in this office as a policy associate in that office and just fell in love with municipal politics. I grew up knowing that I wanted to make a difference in the world. Uh, I, like I said, volunteered on, you know, for nonprofits in different spaces. Uh, I found myself at a point as an adult where I knew uh, electoral politics does make a difference and found myself uh, volunteering on campaigns and even working for uh, the Kerry Edwards campaign in 2004. Uh, but I always wanted to kind of be behind the scenes. When I eventually ran for city council back in 2007 and uh, when I eventually ran for mayor in 2017, uh, some of the mentors and teachers who I've known my entire life said, oh, we've always seen this coming. And I said, well, no, it wasn't always coming. I never wanted to do this. And they said, well, you might not have seen it coming, but we always saw it coming. The mayor's office is the executive branch of city government. So at the city level, that means uh, that we operate a police department, we operate a fire department. Uh, so, you know, God forbid we have to call 911 in our community. Uh, it's the city's responsibility to make sure there's an ambulance, a fire truck, a police officer uh, ready to race to the rescue. Uh, we operate our recreation centers and our libraries in our city. Uh, we make sure our water stays clean and odorless and, you know, uh, and, and colorless. Uh, we, you know, pave the streets and, you know, fill the potholes in the spring. Uh, we plow the streets when it snows. We've gotten a chance to do that quite a bit this year. Uh, we do land use planning to try to create jobs and economic activity in our city. Uh, so those aspects of city government, of community life, uh, are things that it's my responsibility to work with our city council to ensure that we have uh, the funding to be able to do, uh, and then to work with our staff across the city. We have about 3,000 uh, employees who work for, as part of the City of St. Paul employee family, uh, and so my job is to make sure that they have what they need to serve us all well. My favorite thing, hands down, about St. Paul uh, are the people who live, work, and play here. Every single day in this job, I get to talk to people and just ask them what their dreams are for their children or for the students. What, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or, you know, talking to innovators or business owners about kind of their dreams for this business that they're launching in St. Paul or their career that they're launching in St. Paul. And it always strikes me that we have a city full of just enormous dreams uh, and incredible just ideas and that, that, that's something that excites me every single day. Uh, one of the challenges to that, frankly, is uh, oftentimes those folks are also telling me the challenges that they had as a child growing up uh, or the barriers that they're facing to open their business uh, or you know, feeling left out of our kind of local economy. And so, you know, we know that we still live in a community, we still live in a country where we can better predict a child's expected life outcomes based on her race and her zip code than we can based on how hard she works. That's something we have to change across this country and in St. Paul. The traditional approach to city building is really about the city's skyline and about the buildings and the houses and the physical structures. And uh, there's, there's, there's one school of thought wherein uh, if a mayor uh, gets physical structures built and if there's cranes over the city and there's uh, you know people making money in the city that the city's a success. Uh, Shakespeare once said what is a city but the people and that's our pers that's our entire perspective. It's not about building taller buildings it's about ensuring that all of our people in all of our neighborhoods are equipped to succeed in the future. I'm the first person of color to serve as mayor here in the city of St. Paul. Uh, if I were, were ever to forget that, I, I'd remember fast because right on the wall uh, as we exit the office, uh, there's uh, the wall of mayors that shows uh, all of the uh, 45 people who served in this office before me uh, and none of them who look like me. And you know, there are many people in our city who feel like none of them who look like them or really reflect their uh, kind of upbringing and their background. Uh, that's an important thing. Uh, I think more important than just at face value, the color of my skin uh, is the, the, the culture and the life experiences that I bring to this role. Uh, my hope is that uh, through me, uh, a new set of people are able to see themselves 
uh, in city government, are able to see themselves as represented in city government. Uh, and as I think about the legacy I'd love to have in this office, uh, you know, our, our hope is to invite our entire city into the role of city building, into the work of uh, policy making and setting our budget, uh, and into City Hall in a way that will last far after I'm no longer the mayor. One of my beliefs about St. Paul is that we are a far more global, far more diverse, far more international, intercultural, and multilingual city than most of even our residents know. Uh, and so, you know, one of our goals is to show people this full city. As we bring people into City Hall, we get a chance to meet each other, to engage with each other, to connect with each other in a new way that we don't always do. Uh, and our hope is that we can really find some synergies as a city as a result of that. We want people involved in every aspect of governance and city building. So one of the things that we'll be launching really soon is something I call For St. Paul. It's a For St. Paul initiative with the notion that, you know, if we want to build a city that works for all of us, it's going to take all of us doing some of the building. And so we're challenging our residents to just do four things for this city. The first is do something to invest in yourself and to increase your own personal capacity. The second is do something to make someone else's life or just a day uh, easier. The third is do something for your community to either beautify, uh, to clean it up, or to bring people together in a new way. And then the fourth is we all know that we live right now in a divisive and challenging time. And we're challenging people to not stay silent, but to speak up, do something to let your voice be heard on the public level, whether that's sending an email to your Congress member or coming to visit a city council meeting. So take the Four St. Paul Challenge and come join us. And we're challenging people to do small things. I don't want people to choose something huge that's going to take four years and if we get 100 people together we can do this. Uh, I'm challenging people to just identify something small uh, and that, that, that you can do uh, tomorrow or next week uh, that you can finish yourself. Uh, and the notion is that if we all do uh, four little things, uh, we'll look up and find that we all did something huge. I talk to young folks all the time and people who say, I, I want to run for office, I want to make a difference. Uh, the advice I always give them is uh, focus and start on the difference you want to make in the world. Uh, and just think about, you know, I, I challenge young folks sometimes uh, when you close your eyes and see the world as it should be, uh, and then you open your eyes and see the world as it is, uh, to take note of what the differences are. Uh, and to launch yourself into changing some aspect of the world. You don't have to run for office to change some aspect of the world. Uh, whatever you're interested in, there's a number of ways to get engaged. And I say do everything that you can to change the world in that way. Uh, and when you do that, you'll find yourself sort of bumping your head on City Hall or bumping your head on the state legislature or bumping your head on the school board. Uh, and maybe that's an office you might want to consider running for.